In this video, I want to discuss the MACRS depreciation method, which stands for Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System. And it's the current tax depreciation system in the United States. And under this system, the capitalized cost or the basis of the tangible property is recovered over a specified life by annual deductions for depreciation. And the lives are specified broadly in the Internal Revenue Code. What it does is it allows firms to recover the costs of capital equipment faster than the straight line approach. In a previous video, I've discussed straight line depreciation, which is simply you deduct the same amount every year. Here you're going to deduct more in early years and less in later years. One of the things that you should note that's different about MACRS versus the straight line approach is the salvage value is not deducted when doing the calculations. This seems to be a common mistake that uh, is made when people do uh, the depreciation schedule. All right, right here I'm going to show you an example of some of the property classes. There are actually more, but I couldn't squeeze them all into a slide that would be readable um, on the video. Okay, there's three-year property. And some of the things that fall under three-year property are special handling devices for food and beverage manufacturer. Um, special tools for the manufacture of finished plastic products, etc. Um, there's five-year property, information systems like computers and peripherals, all right, petroleum drilling equipment, etc. So the IRS specifies what table you should use for the um, depreciation. Um, so you don't make it up. You don't decide, okay, I'm going to use, uh, you know, uh, five years for um, you know my other office furniture no they say that's seven year property so you have to go with whatever they tell you um, you should be using this is what the table looks like okay again I've only shown you a few of them three year five year and seven year but there are other uh, depreciation schedules based on the asset class uh, there are a few footnotes here three, five, seven, and 10-year classes use 200%, and the 15 and 20-year classes use 150% declining balance depreciation, all right, which is a depreciation method. You may have covered in accounting class double declining balance, and there are, again, another accelerated depreciation approach. They point out that um, all classes convert to straight line depreciation in the optimal year shown with the um, asterisk. So in for three year equipment, that's in year three. For five year, that's in year four. For seven year, that's in year five. You'll notice that something odd is here. We said this is three year depreciation, but there are four years here. And the reason for that is that they use a half year um, convention, which means that the first year is, it's assumed that you put the property into use on July 1st, the middle of the year. So you only get a half a year's depreciation there, and in the final year, you get another half year. So these are, this is full year, full year, and these two are half year, and that adds up to three years. So you know, same thing with the five year. There are six years here, even though it's a five-year schedule. For the seven year, there are eight periods or eight years, even though it's a seven years depreciation schedule for that half year convention. All right, let's take a look at an example. Suppose you have a piece of equipment that costs a million dollars and has a salvage value of 200,000. Let's find the depreciation each year, assuming the equipment has a useful life of five years. Let's also compute the book value for each year and the after-tax salvage value if you sell the equipment in year three for 425000 And let's assume that the tax rate is 35%. So I've recreated that five-year schedule here, and what you're going to do is you're going to take 20% of the million-dollar cost of the equipment, which is 200000 Again, you don't subtract out the salvage value, in which case this would be a smaller depreciation amount. You take the 200000 that's depreciated from the original book value, which was a million dollars, and you have a, 
an $800,000 book value in year one. In year two, 32% of the million is 320,000. So these percentages are always times the original cost. That's 320,000. Subtract that from the new book value, which was 800,000. You have a book value of 480,000, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Notice that it depreciates it to zero. If you were to have subtracted out the uh, the salvage value, you would find that you would only depreciate it down to that salvage value that we had listed. Okay, so we said let's also calculate the after-tax salvage value or the after-tax cash flow if you sell this piece of equipment for four hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in year three. Now you're gonna sell it for four hundred twenty-five thousand but there's a tax consequence. The tax consequence is you're going to have possibly a capital gain or a capital loss. What does that mean? That means that you're selling it for more or less than it's worth. In this case, the book value is 288000 but you're selling it for 425000 So you have a capital gain here, and you're going to be taxed on that, and we assume the tax rate was 35%. Now, again, a common mistake that's made is people think that you get taxed on the full 425000 That's not correct. You get taxed on the, the amount of the capital gain, how much you're selling it for above the book value. So in this case, you're going to pay uh, $47,950 in taxes, and so your after-tax salvage value, your after-tax cash flow, is going to be $377,050. Okay, so if you're doing some sort of analysis where you're looking at the cash flow um, from selling this, it's going to be $377,050. All right, let's take a look at one other example. Suppose you can only sell the equipment for two hundred thousand. Okay, the book value is two hundred and eighty-eight. You're actually selling. You have a capital loss. Well, it turns out that you're going to have some tax savings here of thirty thousand eight hundred. Okay, you're going to have an eighty-eight thousand dollar capital loss times thirty-five percent. So you're going to save thirty thousand eight hundred dollars in taxes. So your cash flow is going to be two hundred thirty thousand. $800. All right, to summarize, the MACRS allows firms to recover the cost of new equipment faster than the straight line method. And again, the logic for that is, is that if the firm can get their money back faster, they can reinvest um, in new equipment, new plants, okay, create jobs, etc. The IRS specifies the useful life of the different types of equipment and they also provide the schedules based on those useful lives. And as I mentioned before, the MACRS uses this half-year convention, which assumes that the equipment is acquired on July 1st. Therefore, the first and the last year use half the depreciation. Okay, so it's only half a year's worth of depreciation. Um, for example, again, the three-year useful life will be depreciated over four years. So this is a useful um, depreciation method to know if you're doing analysis this is the method you should use because this is the actual um, schedule that the IRS um, provides and that you use when you're doing your taxes.